taking tables out, but at the same time it's led to this gravitational pull towards the back. Um, there are lots more seats down the front. The anointing will be heavier down the front than it will be at the back. Uh, it will be all over this, this hall this evening. Can I just ask, who's here for the first time? Wow, thank you. Well, you're particularly welcome because this is how we like to have our hall well filled. And it's like this uh, from time to time, and we hope we can actually increase the frequency of it. Um, my name's John. My wife Annie there um, uh, is the person who we have to thank for our, our tables. We have a wonderful team who've given us wonderful um, refreshments this evening. We've got Stephen who's going to be leading worship. Um, and you can distinguish everybody but myself because I left it behind uh, because we've got a badge on. So if you've got a question or if you need prayer, later stage, do talk to one of us with a badge on. That's, that's how we operate. As far as the evening is concerned, um, I've just got one or two um, more formal lessons to give in a moment. I'm then going to be um, introducing uh, Shampa and her husband Jonathan, and then we're going to lead into a time of worship for about 15, 20 minutes, and then Shampa and Jonathan are going to come and speak afterwards. We aim to finish formally round about 9.15. Um, obviously, um, there may be another agenda in operation, uh, call the Holy Spirit, and if you need to stay on for prayer, that would be fantastic, but we have to be out of the hall by 10 o'clock, and that means clearing it all out, so if there's any help towards the end of the evening, that would be much appreciated, because we have to get this all sorted uh, and away uh, by the, within that strict deadline. Now, in terms of the formalities, can I just mention to you, particularly with the number of people here tonight, that our main far exit route uh, lies out through the double doors there. And the reason why uh, I've been clucking around a little bit like a hem to make sure we've got enough space is if there is an issue, then we need to go through there. Equally, there are the doors behind you. I feel like the air steward now. <coughs> yeah, the exit is closer than you think. Um, but we can be all very ordered and very logical about this thing. But I just mentioned that, um, so at least I've covered that off. Secondly, um, there was a table you passed coming in. We've put it there simply because there was no other space to put it. On that table, there are a number of leaflets, both about the filling station, about our program. Um, there's some forms uh, so that we can keep in contact with you. Uh, there's a basket if you would like to make a contribution towards running expenses this evening, and that includes gift aid forms. But in addition tonight, um, Shampa and Jonathan have brought some forms uh, if you feel that you want to support them in their ministry. And that takes three forms. There's, there's the formal bit, you know, the gift aid form, if you're going to give a gift tonight, there's a standing order form. But more especially, there are some sponsorship forms. If you feel that you want to actually support one of their children in India, you have that opportunity to do so. Um, we sense that uh, Sean and Jonathan will probably be more at this end of the room this evening, but uh, Sabrine, Sabina, um, our wonderful administrator is going to man the table and help you fill out a form if you feel uh, that you want to do so. Um, but as we know, these days everybody communicates by electronic means as well as you know, by, as it were, analog, uh, you know, the digital and analog solutions. So if, if you want to think and pray about this, there's a means by which you can keep in contact as well. So, okay. Philip is suggesting that we move the table actually into the, the room just to the right of the door, the exit door, so that may give us more space um, uh, to exit later on. But please don't miss this opportunity if you want to become more involved with this ministry tonight. We also want to bless Shampa and Jonathan as well. I, would, I will say now, uh, like all wonderful people um, who are involved in this sort of work, they don't ask for money. This is not a request for money. We don't ask for money at the filling station, but if you feel that you want to give as part of your act of worship, your act of support, then we will make sure that that is channeled uh, to the appropriate quarter. But if you could just indicate how you want your, your money as well to be uh, so directed. So let us just focus for a moment on why we're here. And I'm going to just read from Psalm 96. For great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and glory are in his sanctuary. 
Ascribe to the Lord, O families and nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. So, Father, we dedicate this evening to you now. Just have your way this evening. Come by your Holy Spirit. Inspire us. Renew us. Refresh us. Send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Jonathan, Sean Perl, we would like to come and join our meeting. Can we actually just be very un-English for a moment and just actually give them a clap of praise? train service that takes you as far as Sheringham, where the line stops, and you're here with us till tomorrow. Now, just tell us a little bit about what you're up to at the moment. Um, what, what's brought you to you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm We just got invited. You got invited? <laughs> yes. Uh, we, this is, <laughs> we have some friends who know other people, and yeah. they started networking, and they said, come over, and they set everything up. It was awesome. Great. How long are you here until? We're here till 4 May. We, we got here on 10 April. Yep. We've been in Wales and all across the UK. I mean, all across England. And crisscrossing north, south, east, west, everything. And then we go back to India on May 4th. Okay. Now, we're going to have to keep one with you. How, how's that? Can you hear okay at the back? Because we don't want to be an impediment. Okay, so you can see we have to move the microphone. <laughs> now. How did the two of you meet? Come on, Sean, tell, tell, tell me, how, uh, how did you meet this, this hunk of a man? He came to India from his Bible college. He was in Bible college. He came as a missionary intern, and I was one of the leaders in the church, and I was 17 years old, and uh, God spoke to us both that we will be ministry partners, uh, prayer partners, and life partners. And after two years, we got married. How we, long ago was that? That was in 1987, we got married. And are, are there any little writers? Yes, we have two, one daughter and one son. How old are they now? And now they are 20 and 24, so we are very, very uh, happy empty nesters. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, you tell us a little bit more about the ministry, because I think people need to understand, you know, a little bit more about what Iris does in Calcutta and in, indeed in North India. Uh, yes, we're, we're all over North India. We've, at, I mean, Shampa has lived a lot longer in India than I have, obviously, being raised there. But as, you know, in our adult years, as husband and wife, we've lived in India approximately 16 years. But even when we weren't living in India, we're going back and forth and training leaders and uh, establishing contacts. So most of our married life has been involved in India, and we're really, really interested in uh, giving people who don't have any chance a chance in life, because the we have a large school in a rural area of North India, it's a, it's a tribal place, and there, there are no schools there, it's just completely rural, and they're actually now getting a good, solid education, and we have several other schools. In Orissa, we have two orphanages where the uh, th there was an attempted genocide in 2008 where the, the militant Hindu nationalists tried to slaughter all the tribal Christians up in, in the tribal hills of Orissa. And it, it became such an uh, issue that uh, the, the Indian government wasn't doing anything about it and just letting it continue. So it even got to the point where after a month, uh, Italy and France publicly condemned India and the UN to try to at least raise some awareness. And so as a result, there are all kinds of kids whose parents were slaughtered, and we have a lot of them in, you know, in orphanages. And when you say a lot, what are we talking about in terms of numbers? Yeah. Well, in our orphanage now, we only have about 100. Yeah. But, but 
there were thousands and thousands. Oh. And the, a, a lot of them ended up in really dingy refugee camps in another state, Andhra Pradesh. And yeah. It was pretty horrific. So in, in terms of numbers, I mean, can you help us with a few statistics? Let's start with the number of children that, as it were, you, you have underneath your ministry. We, because we, we'll get to numbers, but there's, uh, there are different categories. There, there are schools, there's orphanages, and then we have uh, outreach centers in the slum areas in Calcutta and different, different parts of West Bengal and other areas. And these are like really dingy slum places where people are living in, you know, cardboard shacks and things like that. And yet they're very, very smart kids. They're, they're amazing. And so we have English as a second, we, we have these classes for them. Mm -hmm. And English as a second language, um, sewing, computers, like music, guitars, mm -hmm. and um, self-defense, and just, just all kinds of life skills, and yeah, music lessons, and life skill, just serious life skills, and discipleship, just yeah. following Christ. And so, and then we have a lot of churches. So, yeah. so with the, I don't know the total number. Of, if you add up those categories, how many kids do you think? Uh, about three, four, five thousand. We don't count anymore. No. <laughs> but in terms of churches, I mean, when you come, when you come in as a pastor, what's the cost of that sort of putting on the collar? Uh, we we support all our senior pastors because they have like hundreds and hundreds of churches under them and they are constantly busy. So we support them per month about $100. Right. And that's all we can afford. And we have other pastors that are just waiting and praying to be supported. And we actually uh, have stopped counting churches because after it grew over 2,000, we have left counting. Now they are in the 10,000s and we don't count. so. We can't tell you an exact number. So where does where does Christian Church now stand in India? Uh, Is it growing? I think we have more Christians in India than in the UK. <laughs> yeah, well, we do. <laughs> the and it, as it continues to grow, the wise, yes, because of the uh, the incredible thing is uh, the way God moves in India. It's a little different than everywhere else. The, these are Hindu militants you're talking about. The, they're very staunch Hindus all over. And our work is primarily 99.9% .9 Hindus. All our pastors who are pastoring our churches are 100% Hindu background. Mm. All our youth who are planting churches are 100% Hindu. All our kids are 100% Hindu. Um, except the orphanage. I mean, those kids are the ones who are rescued uh, from, you know, their parents are martyrs. They are Christian because their, their parents, they are actually second generation. And so it's all over the north of India. We primarily work only in the north of India. It's the hardest. And you know, the south of India is actually, it's called, in India it's called the Bible Belt. And, and they have churches every five feet. They have one church and all one ministry. So this is why we uh, got, when he called us, he said, because we wanted to be in the south because it's very nice. <laughs> but God took didn't it want it nice. <laughs> and the, the children whose uh, details are on the table, um, what are their sorts of backgrounds? Actually, you will not see them. Uh, we didn't write martyr kids. So you will see the word abandoned because we didn't want that to be. If, when, if you sponsor, if you feel God is telling you to, then we shall give you details on an email. Because we didn't want that in the writing on a paper. We didn't know who was going to be there. So it's not really safe to say these are martyr kids, then we are really uh, incriminating ourselves. And we've had many bomb threats and death threats and kidnapping threats and all. So we know our time is not up yet, so we don't want to take all those chances. Yeah, but but Shampo, John, just tell us a little bit about your own personal situation, because one of the things we can do is pray for you yes. after this evening. So how can we pray most effectively? I, I think uh, 
It's, it's really hard to explain unless one has been to India and lived there. Like we, we live in Calcutta and, and it's a really crazy place because in, in, if you include the, not just the proper city limits, but the just, you know, the unincorporated areas around it, it's around 18 million people all jammed together. It's just, that's just one city. And the traffic, I mean, every day there are people getting just, you know, mauled by traffic accidents and buses and a lot of road rage. The craziest traffic you've ever seen. Just driving from one place to another is, um, you know, it's like like death is always there. So personal safety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but, yeah. and then there's like the intense heat and humidity and all these people jammed together. So there's, the whole city is always like on the edge of rage. Mm -hmm. There's just like this rage always under the surface. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, uh, a lot of people, I, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are Hindus and I have friends who are Christians and they all in common, they all say, that in Calcutta they feel clinically depressed. There's this depression that's always there, a lot of bad energy. And and then the places that we go outside of Calcutta are really intense also. And so it's just uh, just that we can rise above all the uh, the negativity, the the hostility, the rage, the depression, all just all those things are constantly there. And but they're not really seen things. They're not it's not like an open threat like somebody with a gun. But that's the thing that yeah. that's the thing that chews people up, and most people who start a work in Calcutta leave. This, the statistics are that most people who start ministry in Calcutta will leave within two years, completely chewed up, and just never come back. And so it's a that's that's really the I don't know that's the main thing. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that God will keep us well, like in health wise. Uh, the, the air is so polluted. It is over 300% more than what the World Health Organization allows. And so it's like, even if you, even if we have never smoked a cigarette, the, uh, the health is saying that, the health organization is saying that, even if you've never smoked in your life, mm -hmm. that our lungs are like prone to have it says if you smoke two packs a day. Yes. Two packs a day. Okay. On the other hand, the Indian diet is very good for you. The Indian diet, the Indian curry is very good for you. Oh, it's very good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so life has its compensation. Yeah, yeah. Except it's full, you have to avoid all the oil and salt. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, oh it's, indeed. And yeah. you keep working out. You can see this in the movie. It's working out. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think we'll now move to time of worship. Okay. And pass the email to you guys. So, I don't know if you can come and join me over here. Could I just say, um, Shonka's great ministry is a ministry of hugs. If you need a hug tonight, then grab it. I, I met Shonka about 18 months ago for the first time. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go up for a hug. And there's something very special, something very releasing. So don't miss the opportunity to have a hug tonight. Yes? Okay. So without further ado, see you. Good evening, everyone. Shall we stand together, if you so wish, if you are able? Let's worship. Feel free to sit down if you're more comfortable.
Yes, sir. 